has been found in Alaska, and now it must be brought to market. Neither a barge nor a tanker can stand the weight of the ice during the six winter months in Alaska's Cook Inlet. Only structures of the toughest steel can withstand such a beating. So the oil wells stand idle, representing a multi-million dollar investment on ice. And the only way to earn a return on this investment is to build a pipeline when there isn't any ice. But in warmer months, there is a host of other problems, such as high winds and waves. And swift currents, which move with each tide. Only at slack tide can work be performed, at high or low. Every six hours, the water depth changes by 30 feet. inlet. The wall of this pipe is twice as thick as normal. It is coated with an inch of concrete to make it heavy enough to withstand inlet currents. A spiral rib of concrete is added as a spoiler after research shows this is the best way to prevent high frequency vibrations caused by the currents. There are 14 miles of this 8-inch pipe, enough for two lines from the shore of the inlet to the platform. If one should break down, the other still could carry crude oil until repairs can be made in the spring. The pipe is coated at Auburn, Washington, then loaded on a barge for the long journey to Alaska. get the pipe safely to the bottom of Cook Inlet? The answer is here. A giant stinger which guides the pipe on rollers to the inlet floor. It is built at Anchorage, the biggest piece of construction equipment ever fabricated in Alaska. feet long and 140 tons of steel, providing a sturdy design dictated by the powerful inlet currents. The pipe will go down either side of the stinger, and one end of the device will be connected to a barge. The other will ride on the bottom. The battle with Cook Inlet will involve men as well as machinery, and they must be provided for. Here is a tube which divers will use to descend to the bottom of the inlet to make the final connection. Living quarters must be provided for the crew, and enough food is accumulated to last a month or more.
the platform, preliminary work moves ahead. A group of workers weld a prefabricated steel wrap around one of the legs. It serves two purposes. First, it will take wear and tear caused by the ice, protecting a structural member. Second, it will provide grooves to shelter the pipelines from the ice. What happens to the oil when it arrives on shore? It will pass through production facilities. Then the oil will move five miles south through another pipeline which must be installed. This line terminates at a dock which is open the year round. Here the oil can be loaded on a tanker. On the shores of Cook Inlet, pipeliners prepare for the main battle of the operation. Ammonium nitrate is a common fertilizer, but not now. For this operation, it serves as an explosive charge. The explosive charge is pulled into the water. creates a ditch at the shore to protect the pipelines from ice. All attention now turns to the derrick barge, where the pipelines will be welded segment by segment. First though, the barge must be equipped with a stinger, and it can be attached only at slack tide. The derrick lifts the device and swings its hinged end around to the barge. threaded through the rollers a winch on the bluff supplies the power to pull the first pipe to shore and up the bank of the pipe begins in earnest. Pull pipe the 
foreman shouts, and the barge is moved out from under the pipe. This produces a sound that will long remain in the memories of the men. The pipeliners find a potential enemy in the wind. Currents are bad enough in themselves to halt work. But when the wind starts blowing across the inlet, the pipeliners have new worries. Tugs must be called on to hold the barge in place. A storm threatens the operation, and a helicopter heads for cover on shore. Crews are changed every 12 hours on the barge, when possible. In this case, the water is too rough, and it's no go. It isn't safe. This crew will have to stay on duty.